So how do you get a super crisp, detailed photo of Jupiter in 2025? And the first step for sure is focus, because focus, if you do not have exact precision focus, well, it's not gonna really matter how good this scene was. It's not gonna matter how good your collimation was. If your focus isn't that great, well, you're not gonna get a good photo. It's gonna be blurry. It's not gonna be easy to sharpen. You're gonna get a lot of artifacts. So I would definitely recommend focusing Spend a lot of time focusing, especially if you don't have an autofocuser. Spend a lot of time manually trying to make sure it looks perfect. I do spend quite a bit of time focusing channels, mostly because I know it's gonna come out bad if I don't get in good focus. And you can't get good focus without good collimation. I'm saying this because, think of it this way, astigmatism. If you have astigmatisms in your eyes, you can't even like get your eyes in focus at all. Not perfectly anyway, even if you don't have like nearsightedness or farsightedness. Same way with telescopes. You can't get them in focus if your uh, astigmatism or a collimation is actually off. So like if it's not coming in directly to, through straight at the telescope, it's not going to work and you're not gonna get in perfect focus like you hope for. But sometimes it can be really hard to actually get good focus when the seeing is bad. This is basically the turbulence in the atmosphere and this is things that we've talked about a thousand times. But seeing is very important. And there is a bonus tip I'm gonna give at the end about good seeing, and I'll tell you this in, at the very end of the video. And also, another thing I found out, transparency. When the transparency is bad, like seeing could be really good, but the transparency is bad, you're not really gonna get a detailed photo either. It's really just gonna kinda dim it out and make it kinda wishy-washy and hazy, so to speak. Um, kind of like when you have smoke in the atmosphere. But how did I get an image like this? Oh, well, I actually use a Celestron C8, and I actually have gotten pretty good images with the Celestron C5, or the 127 SLT, they don't have a C5, I keep forgetting. <laughs> but the C8 is actually a very good telescope, and you can actually get some amazing photos out of it. Now, I know it's it may seem like at first, like, oh, I'm getting these really crappy photos of the Celestron C8, or something similar, like in the similar aperture range. But actually, it's only because of likely where you're located, how good the turbulence is, because location can help depict seeing, very much so, I've learned that. But um, really depends on where you're at and how many, how many clouds you're near. But um, seeing is very important. All this stuff I mentioned is very important, but there is a special tip that will really help you if you do manage to get good seeing. So if you got good seeing, not only is it easier to focus, not everything else, but since the planet's gonna be brighter and good transparency and good seeing, and it's gonna be less like turbulent and more stable, then that's when you can actually put on a small Barlow, depending on which camera you have, you might already have a Barlow on, but you can actually increase the magnification um, in order to zoom it in and actually get more resolution out of it. Just be careful on how much you do this though, even if the scene's great, like excellent, be careful because you'll dim it out too much to the point where there's all noise and you have to crank up gain, making it noisy. So you just gotta be careful there. And if you're wondering, yes, I did Barlow this image of Jupiter. So that's pretty much how I got this amount of detail because the scene was decent. It wasn't amazing, amazing, but it was good enough to where I felt like, oh, I could probably Barlow this. So it was my best Jupiter. And I did actually take photos out of my uh, little collection um, and try all of them. So there was one without a Barlow, one with a Barlow, and the one with a Barlow actually helped it looked better than the one without a barlow only because the scene was good otherwise it'd be the other way around oh and by the way my name is asher i run this channel here at astro photography quest if you'd like to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe and leave me a comment and maybe a question if you have one i'll be sure to answer that anyways until next time clear skies